My name is Michelle Emsley. I'm the president of Capicoa and I work here at the Yukon Art Center in Whitehorse, Yukon, traditional territory of the Kwan Lundun First Nation and Ta'an Kwachun Council. This beautiful snow sculpture was carved for us for World Whale Day Festival. The COVID-19 pandemic has completely disrupted the process for the creation and sharing of transformative artistic expression around the globe. In response, Capicoa's International Market Development Committee launched this project, Connections, to provide artists and presenters virtual space for exchanging ideas and to develop new networks. Canadians came together virtually with their counterparts from Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Denmark, Mexico, Norway, Scotland, and Taiwan. The artists represent a multidisciplinary breadth of work from across Canada and around the globe. As a culmination to the project, we asked each of the artists to produce a three minute video to share their practice with hopes for future international exchange. On behalf of Capicoa, we acknowledge that Connections is supported in part by a contribution from Global Affairs Canada Can Export Association Program and the Department of Canadian Heritage Creative Export Program. And now, let's meet the artists. Yeah, it's recording. For myself. Atitu, Atira Renata Aruk. I come to you from Treaty 7 Territory in Banff, Alberta, Canada, home of Stony Nakoda, Blackfoot, Sutton of the Dene, and Metis Region 3. I myself am not from this land, although I'm very grateful to be here. I'm originally from the Northwest Territories, and my mother and father are both Indigenous. My mother is Dene Susane Cree, and my father is Danu Vianui Tguchien. And I'm an artist and I've been a theater maker for such a long time, I think nearly 20 decades now. And I've done it as a producer, a director, an actor, a storyteller, and a playwright. Right now I'm director of Indigenous Arts at BAM Center for Arts and Creativity. So I wear the artistic hat and I wear the, the, present, the presenter uh, director's hat. And I'm grateful for those. And the big thing that they have in common is that I, both of, as an artist and as director, I create space for Indigenous voice to be heard the way that they want to be heard, the way that we want to be heard. And that's important and integral to the work that I do. So I founded Akpik Theatre. So Akpik Theatre is the Inuk name that my great grandmother gave me uh, when I was born. And it's the cloud berry that grows in the barren lands. And I like that because it's this juicy little berry that creates, uh, that, that gives us a lot of flavor. And I feel like Akpik Theatres does similar work to that. It's Northern based and it's Indigenous focused. And so all the work we create has a Northern Indigenous lens to it that's connected to community. And community is another thing that I wear with both of my hats is making sure that we represent community, connect to community and serve community. And that's vital. And when we think about community, we think about how stories can are inspired by land and place. And that when stories leave that land and place, Place, how are we honoring and recognizing those stories and ensuring there's still a sense of reciprocity to the inspiration from the people, from the land that brought it. So the last 10 months have been hard for all of us. We know this. And so some of the things that ActPIC Theatre has done is we have postponed some of our work so that to keep health and safety consideration to the elders that are in those isolated communities and we'll return when we can return to them safely. Uh, we've pivoted so some work that I've done as an artist is I've dramaturged and directed for podcasts works that can now be uh, heard that way. Some of them have become filmic where we're working in film in community and bringing it together as a film and so still that community engagement but from afar. And, you know, I'm still um, programming and creating work for online at BAM Center. So what do I see moving forward? How, we, how can we work digitally? Well, I think digital collab, international collaboration is us visiting each other digitally with the intention that we'll get to meet each other in person. Must you chill. I do not mi nombre es Sasil Sánchez Chan, soy originaria de Shaya, Tecash, Yucatán, al sureste de México. Eh, actualmente he estado colaborando con Teatro de la Rendija, eh, soy coautora de uno de los últimos libretos por los que la Rendija ha estado eh, trabajando escenográficamente, se llama Tu Cuerpo Partido. Eh, mi colaboración consistió en 
eh, aportar los textos en lengua maya para este guión. Eh, yo espero que la relación con otros artistas a nivel internacional, nacional y, y local eh, pueda tener otros contextos y otros espacios eh, bajo todo este sentido de la pandemia. Creo que cada quien, cada artista, cada persona, cada grupo ha encontrado otras formas de, de trabajar y de realizar el arte que hacen. Me parece que es importante encontrar estas otras formas de converger de compartir y de aterrizar nuestras ideas desde cada una de nuestras posibilidades. Eh, me parece que los contactos a través de, de los medios digitales eh, nos hacen y nos orillan en, a encontrar otras formas de, de cómo lograr, de cómo exponer y de cómo lo, eh, tener proyección hacia todo lo que nosotros queremos expresar y decir. Es por eso que me parece importante que logremos entre todos eh, crear comunidad y hacer que los esfuerzos colectivos logren tener un impacto y una recepción que sea provechosa para todos. Como ver es una plataforma de artes escénicas que se dedica a la creación y la producción en la ciudad de Concepción. Somos una plataforma joven que se activa principalmente desde la autogestión y que está principalmente enfocada en los procesos abiertos o largos por sobre la búsqueda de resultados o productos. El eje que dinamiza la creación de la plataforma es el cuerpo sensible y la poética del movimiento. ¿ya? Nos interesa construir atmósferas que dialoguen eh, entre el gesto, el movimiento, el espacio vivido para activar en los otros paisajes que apelen a su sensibilidad. Por otro lado, además de la creación, hemos puesto nuestro interés en levantar instancias que, que buscan activar una visión de la danza en donde la sensibilidad sea un pilar fundamental para la creación. Y claro, y ahí surge también entonces la relevancia que nosotros le damos a la improvisación. Ya, de hecho, por eso mismo, activamos de forma permanente un circuito de sesiones de improvisación en distintos centros culturales, en espacios no convencionales también, en donde nos juntamos a practicar y a estudiar de manera colectiva. Eh, nos gusta entonces pensar la danza como una práctica artística que se vierte entre lo artístico y la vida misma, al mismo tiempo en el que nos vamos entendiendo y reflexionando sobre, sobre nosotras y nosotros mismos. Durante los últimos 10 meses hemos podido notar la relevancia de revisitar y examinar nuestras prácticas artísticas eh, para entendernos mejor, ¿sí? tanto nuestras preguntas, nuestro quehacer, y de hecho ha sido súper enriquecedor hacerlo de forma colectiva. Ya hemos podido inspirarnos en otras, nos hemos visto reflejados en, en otros compañeros y compañeras y, y sin duda hemos podido decantar en, en, en nuestro ejercicio de retrospectiva la importancia vital que tiene la disciplina artística en sus diversas formas de expresión, en sus diversos formatos. Creemos que más adelante la colaboración internacional a través de las artes va a permitir aproximar eh, sensibilidades que están distantes. ¿ya? Y eso a la larga va a permitir construir redes vivas con otras posibilidades, con otras alternativas de reconocernos, ¿ya? de mirarnos como culturas diversas con distintas formas de expresión. Sou Paula de Renault, vivo na cidade de Recife, estado de Pernambuco, no nordeste do Brasil. Um lugar lindo, cheio de praias maravilhosas e de uma cultura popular riquíssima. Eu sou atriz, produtora, gestora e atualmente eu produzo o Reside, Festival Internacional de Teatro de Pernambuco. Para mim, uma experiência incrível participar do cohort promovido pelo Capacua. Uma experiência incrível quando pessoas que nunca se viram anteriormente se encontram pela primeira vez numa sala virtual, com idiomas e culturas totalmente diferentes, com diversos e distintos problemas 
sociais e políticos. E, e diversos também, diversas também formas de criação e de produção artística. E aos poucos vai se percebendo o interesse de uns pelos outros, o interesse uh, pessoal uh, como também profissional. E nesse momento as barreiras vão se quebrando e, e, e vamos enxergando os nossos pontos em comum, uh, como também é refletindo sobre as nossas diferenças. E, e assim vamos nos aproximando, descobrindo afinidades e construindo conexões. E eu acho que é nesse ponto que se constrói uma base sólida para uma parceria. Uma parceria que é profissional, mas que antes de tudo ela tem que ser humana. E eu acredito que o futuro da colaboração internacional está no desenvolvimento cada vez maior da formação de redes. Eu não acredito que haja mais espaço para colaborações uh, unilaterais, e sim para troca de conhecimentos, de experiências que agreguem valores para os dois lados. E, e dessa forma uh, a gente vai sim Uh, criando colaborações e parcerias de, de uma forma duradoura e principalmente contínua, que é o que a gente sempre buscou. Hi, uh, my name is Chris Reed and I'm a performance artist and producer based here on the lands of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. Um, you might know it as Vancouver, BC, Canada. And um, I am a drag artist you know, known by the name Continental Breakfast and also a member of a non-binary drag troupe called The Darlings. Um, the Darlings has become the main focus of my performance art career over these past two years. Um, we started the group in September of 2018 and we started by doing live shows in Vancouver initially and then we started to branch out to other parts of Canada and the United States. Um, When we started the group, our initial plan was just to create a new space for queer performance artists to be able to perform that wasn't focused specifically in nightlife. Um, the four of us, uh, myself, Made in China, PM, and Rose Butch, we were often focused in nightclubs and rave settings with our performance art, and we discussed wanting to create a new space where we could create a uh, platform where theater and drag could come together into a space that people might not have seen it before. Um, when the pandemic hit 10 months ago, uh, we tried to react very quickly. As soon as the lockdowns were announced in Vancouver, um, the day after we decided that we were going to do a digital show online through our webcams and we were going to broadcast it live on Facebook. And um, what started out as us wanting to provide just an artistic release for people um, in a fairly dark and stressful, uncertain time, um, ended up garnering a lot of attention. And um, after the press that was gathered around the show, our first quarantine show uh, garnered 10,000 viewers. And um, this really outdid any of our expectations for the show. So we decided that we were going to produce a second one and did one another one three weeks later. Um, we faced censorship online from in both cases, uh, which lit a bit of a fuel under our butts to create more. Um, I operate a media company called Queer Base Media, so we took the platform and we moved it to a place where that work couldn't be taken down. And um, now with QueerBaseMedia.com, we have a new space where queer people can broadcast any type of content they want, whether it's deemed explicit by the public or not. Um, I think that that's a huge barrier that people, artists faced during this quarantine was putting their stuff online and having it taken down. And we felt that we needed to do something about that. Hi, we are Mary Louisa Stenebier, Ida Elizabeth Larson, and me, Jonathan Benici, and together we make up the founders and artistic directors of the Institute of Interconnected Realities, which was formally established in mid-2020. 
The Institute is a platform for choreographic thinking. And through the Institute, we produce our own work, we curate the work of other artists, and we also conduct research. What is really particular about the Institute is that we approach it as a choreographic work in itself. From the level of organization to the artistic output, everything is considered choreography. Practically, we live between Hoskiller, Copenhagen, and an island in the south of Denmark called Moon. Since the COVID-related uh, restrictions um, kicked in in mid-March last year, in our case, uh, we've been engaging in a lot of um, initiatives that were launched that allowed us to experiment with different mediums uh, than the ones that we're used to, and that in turn led to new ideas for future productions. Um, but the most meaningful thing in our case has been that it the lockdowns have kind of slowed down ta time um, and allowed us to um, feed some resources that we could then prioritize on other things that we normally have a difficult time prioritizing, such as formulating long-term visions and really thinking about how this crisis, like the potentials of this crisis, and sort of answer questions about how we would like to work in the future. And our dreams for the future of international collaboration is to have more in-depth collaborations. And this could mean that you get to live and work in a given place for a while in order, uh, yeah, in order to, to connect with the locality on different <coughs> uh, levels. And then in our case, that would mean to bring our families. So these kind of things would also have to be considered in such a mutation. And then we also hope to have a focus on artist to artist driven collaborations, which we think will kind of put attention towards the artist's needs uh, rather than the institution's needs. Then we hope to develop strategies for passing on works without necessarily having to travel. And then lastly, we also hope for an openness um, to allowing works to transform in relation to a given place and context. And um, yeah, this we kind of think could extend the life of stage works. This would of course uh, require to let go of control from the artist's perspective. My name is Alyssa Martin. I'm a choreographer and a director working in Toronto. Uh, for as long as I can remember making dances, I've used choreography as a sort of slip slide into the creation of these alternate universes. And I've used these universes to laugh at framework that I am not so fond of. Now that dance making has shifted into a professional context, I still approach choreography with that same curiosity. Uh, but now that's coupled with a really, really deep seated appreciation for the people that I get to collaborate with. Most of my work is done under the name of a company called Rock Bottom Movement, which is a company that I started about eight years ago and is made up of a really small, close-knit group of collaborators. The way that we work is that we come together in these really joyful, playful working spaces and we dig into our psyches as if they are the treasure chests at a carnival and we take what we find and we make sense of it by distilling it through dance and movement and original song and music and found text and nuggets of pop culture and we take all of these things and we spin them into these multidisciplinary spectacles that are comedic in nature that sort of giggle at who we are and why we are the way we are and that are emotionally vulnerable especially if you really look into them. The goal of these absurd palaces are that they invite audiences in. And my hope is that when an individual encounters the work that we make, they feel free and they feel like they can interpret it as themselves. And maybe they're able to laugh at corners of their brain that they might not otherwise laugh at. Now, this the past 10 months have made that live exchange a little bit trickier. And as a maker of playful and surreal buoyant work, in order to keep myself up, I have imagined these audiences as if they were squished through a straw that extends through the lens of a camera or a Zoom workshop or social media. And I am practicing trying to distill that magic through the straw so that it can offer a moment of adventure or curiosity or laughter to folks who need it. When I think about 
international collaboration, now that we've all sort of met in this digital landscape, I find one of the positives is that it has sort of leveled the playing field for independent artists like myself and many of my friends and colleagues. And so what that offers is this beautiful ability to connect with people and create friendships and collaborations with individuals far outside the spheres of, of people that we get to greet in live spaces. And I'm very excited to continue to imagine and reimagine new work that, that considers a wider group of people and that can sneak through straws that end up in folks' homes, places that I might not have even thought of reaching out to. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Duggan. I'm coming to you today from beautiful Kingston, Ontario, Canada, located on the traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territories. As the Performing Arts Manager with the Municipality of Kingston, my primary role is the curation of a multidisciplinary performing arts program, affectionately called Grand On Stage, which is in reference to our century-old Grand Theatre. Uh, uh, the Grand On Stage program offers approximately 50 public performances uh, throughout the season, as well as an incredibly robust education program for local students and schools. The opportunity to participate in the International Cohort Program has not only been uh, rewarding, but incredibly restorative. Uh, the conversations we are sharing uh, have been informative, uh, they've been inspiring, uh, but they've also highlighted that as we prepare to emerge from this uh, worldwide pandemic, we must work together uh, to find new and creative ways to reestablish the touring ecology. Uh, if the predictions are accurate, uh, they say we're on the cusp of another Roaring Twenties, but it's going to be through these international partnerships and through collaborative exchanges such as this uh, that we're going to be able to succeed in this new world. So thank you to Capicoa and thank you very much to the funders uh, who have made this incredible program a reality. Hi, my name is uh, Carmen Gil Froelich. I'm a media artist based in Bogota, Colombia. I work as a teacher, also as a director of a multimedia projects. I, I teach at the Universidad de los Andes in Bogota, Colombia. And my practice has to uh, do with uh, the effects of technology in our creative processes. I also work a lot in, in interdisciplinary projects. I have been working since the late 90s. And uh, mainly I started in uh, net art, multimedia art, mainly based on screen and computers and uh, by 2004 I started to explore uh, real time and live uh, video formats and large scale projections. I founded a collective that is called Retrovisor. We used to play, it was like a musical audiovisual project. We used to play a uh, mix between uh, electronic music and Colombian and Latin American rhythms and I would do the visuals so I'm first generation VJ and then by 2008 I started working on the performing arts um, because of an invitation we got from uh, Lex Plus, which is a very famous Colombian dance company. And then by 2010, we started uh, thinking about developing our own uh, performing arts project. So we founded La Quinta del Lobo, which is a collective that has been working for 10 years now in uh, projects that deal with performance, live music, technology, video, live video. Uh, data visualization and I'm very interested in the way technology should work as a poetic not as a special effect. We have uh, had developed four plays so far. The first one was called Vanitas Livellum, the book of vanities, which is uh, it was uh, an artwork, I mean a performance that dealt with the effects of technology in our era and how we construct our personalities. Then we started working with, um, uh, we, we have worked also a lot with indigenous communities from Colombia with the uh, originary people and also with Afro-Colombian uh, culture. Um, I'm very interested in, in this kind of approaches. Now I'm trying to find again a voice uh, coming mostly from where I come from, which is a mixed uh, cultural background. And um, the second play was called uh, The Mangrove Tales. We worked there with uh, Sankofa. Then we did another project which was called uh, 
Cyprus. It's a project that dealt with uh, climate change. And now we're working on Infinitus, which is mainly wave-based, but then we're going to do a performance in the Colón Theater in Bogota. My main interest is to try to rethink the way we are doing performing arts today and how we keep connecting with an audience. Thank you. Hello, I am Andrea Peña. I am uh, originally from Bogota, Colombia, but I am based now out of Montreal, Canada, in Quebec. Uh, I consider myself a, let's call it a movement designer, a movement thinker. Uh, I am a choreographer, so my, my practice is in choreography, but at the same time, I'm also an industrial designer and I have a master's in industrial design. So my practice is not only rooted in the moving body and choreography, but at the same time, a whole practice around materiality, um, the human's relationship to the built environment through industrial design. Uh, I think these these two elements really come together in my artistic practice. Um, I have and I am the artistic director of Andrea Peña and Artists, APNA, which is a multidisciplinary company based out of Montreal. And so the company and my work are really centered around creating multidisciplinary creations that are performative in nature, that use movement, choreography, the body, but also use the criticality questions, theories that come from and pertain to industrial design and design thinking, notions of materiality, space, and how the body encounters these ideas. And so with APNA, with the company, we really work on, 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 on situating these two universes together in order to create performative, uh, performative encounters that try to uh, present a sort of critical and nuanced uh, reflection on society. I, I'm curious around disrupting, um, disrupting norms, disrupting our dormant consciousness and how do we how do we call action to humanity through the works that we present and the works that we perform? Um, I work with a beautiful group of collaborators and we've been collaborating for about seven years. So it's a group of uh, from dancers to lighting designers, set designers, costume designers, uh, composers, digital artists, co-designers, uh, dramaturgs, a lot of thinkers that that we bring together in APNA to try to question where we're going to go. And I think this has been a really beautiful opportunity for us to also do across these last 10 months to use our knowledge of other fields, of other practices like design to merge and really think about what is the future of our practice, what is the future not of only of our practice, but uh, what is our role as artists um, moving towards a future that is unknown yet with full of possibilities and new cross interdisciplinary dialogues, not only between practices, but between people, between cultures, and how do we expand that, challenge that, and move forward with possibility, with critique, with reflection, um, towards bringing new notions of our humanity, even if that is through technology. So we feel really fortunate to be uh, in a place where we are comfortable working with both mediums. And again, we, we aim and I aim through my work to, to use these different mediums, these technologies, these practices to question, reflect and bring around notions of a vulnerable humanity. Gracias.